What's going on? In this video, I just really want to talk about why right now is like the perfect time to start building your dividend stock portfolio if you haven't already. And you might have already started your dividend portfolio. And this is honestly just even more motivation to continue to add money into your account. You know, I know it can be very easy to be like, you know, maybe I shouldn't add this money in my portfolio because of X, Y, and Z reason. Or maybe you've just been putting off starting your portfolio. And I kind of really want to stress that the sooner you start, the better. But right now is like the perfect time to start. And let's go ahead and get straight into this video. So what you're looking at right now is my portfolio. If you want to get my portfolio, sign up with an account for M1 Finance using the link in the description or the pinned comment down below. You sign up, deposit, I believe it's $50. You'll get another $50 free dollars back. So it's free money that they're handing out. And you can make the exact same investments as me. My portfolio yields about 2.85% with 25 different holdings, but you'll see all these different slices and things like that, and it's performed pretty well over the past few years. But here is why right now is truthfully the best time to start investing. And the main key point I want to stress is that the markets are down. Okay, They're in correction territory year to date from January 1st, down 12.35%. This yields you the opportunity to buy stocks for cheaper than they currently or relatively should be valued, okay? Over the past year, the market is still up 5%, but we used to be all the way up here, and since then, we're down 12.35%, okay? Year to date, past six months, we're down 5.37%. The past month, we're down 4.48%. The past week, we're down almost 2%. And on Friday alone, we went down 1.3%. There's a lot of stuff talking about Ukraine and Russia tensions, and all these different aspects that could cause our economy to shift downward. However, long term, markets always tend to come back up. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up, they fall down, and then they go right back up. And that's what everybody's expecting. You just gotta be patient in the market. Soon, these little, these big dips per se, are just gonna be little corrections where you are glad you bought, put money into it. But let's go ahead and talk about the main reasons on what I want to stress in this video. So let's get straight into it. So let's start with talking about why dividend stocks in the first place. Like why shouldn't you put your money into an ETF or a growth stock that has all this potential to go up 10x or whatever it might be. And first off, that's because dividends are a large percent of the total stock market's returns. And we'll get into that in a minute. But dividend paying stocks perform far better than the market in the long term and dividend investors are in it for the long term at least like 99 percent of us uh consistent passive income and everybody wants passive income in their life you know it's better against market crashes in bear markets which is what we're seeing right now we're seeing a lot of bear bear market and correction territory in the market and the dividend snowball effect which is incredibly effective and the sooner you start the sooner you get your snowball effect to start kicking in but let's go ahead and talk about how to build a dividend stock portfolio if you have not already, and after we get through these key tips, you'll see why dividend stocks are just amazing and why right now is the perfect timing. First up, as you get to invest, the thing you need to do is invest rather than spend. So maybe you spend money on things that you don't necessarily need, but you like to have them. Like Maybe you really like to have a Netflix, a Hulu, and a Disney Plus subscription, but you never use your Hulu subscription. You just have it. Maybe you cancel it and you invest that difference. You know what I mean? Next up is you don't want to be a yield chaser. You don't want to just invest in dividend stocks because they have a high dividend yield. You need to always make sure they have a good payout ratio that is sustainable. I have multiple videos talking about this type of information. You can go check them out. The videos will be in my in everywhere on my channel. Just go find the video. It'll say like things to look for in dividend stocks. I'll even put cards up so you don't have to worry about that. For stocks, lo lower than 60% is kind of safe for payout ratios, you know, REITs, real estate investment trusts, they can pay out more because they have to pay 90% of their earnings to shareholders and dividends. So it's a little bit different. But third is you want to invest in companies that have a really bright future ahead of them. You know, you want to invest, you're not just buying a stock, you're buying a company. You want to make sure it'll grow until the value and not just the dividend. Invest in what you know and what you understand. So if you understand, maybe you understand the food industry really well, but you don't know anything about tech, if you don't understand how a company can make money and you can't explain to like a five-year-old how this company makes money, don't invest in it. That's one thing I live by. So you really want to know and have true conviction behind that company. Aim for any dividend yield as long as it's sustainable. You know, 
if it's an 8% dividend yield that's sustainable and you want it and it's good for your portfolio fit, go for it. If you want a 0.08% yield and it's good for your portfolio fit, go for it. Anything below 1% is pretty low, 3% is good, 5% plus is high. And you want to only buy the companies that you have a really good gut feeling about. You know, Make sure you truly believe in the future of the company and their dividends. You're not just in it because the yield is good. And you want to see that the company's increasing revenues, net incomes, free cash flows, really good indicators that this company is a solid investment. Look at the balance sheet, more assets and liabilities. It's something I really like to see also in these companies. But let's go ahead and talk about why dividend stocks are historically better in the market than like growth stocks and everything. They've shown to provide greater long-term returns and gains rather than non-paying dividend stocks or, or growth stocks just to talk about them. You know, these dividend-paying companies are usually going to be more established, and they have built a moat. They've built up their company to where they currently are, to where they have enough profits to pay out these dividends, and it's sustainable, you know. They can bear through these bear markets, but growth stocks oftentimes get hit with no recovery and no returns. So if you look at this image right here, it might be a little bit hard to read, but looking at these dividend payers, the more that a company increases their dividends, relatively speaking, and the higher the yield that they pay, usually the better they perform. Okay, the non-payers perform the absolute worst out of all these, all of these stocks. Okay, looking at this, dividend growers and initiators in the S P five hundred and dividend payers performed the best. Okay, they performed far better than just the average S P five hundred index. Companies that didn't change their dividend policy were below the S P five hundred. Dividend non-payers and dividend cutters and eliminators were far below the S P five hundred. Now. They're better in bear and flat markets, and that's what we're seeing right now. When markets are trading sideways or down, you're losing money. You're losing paper money. You're losing that value in your portfolio. However, you should be receiving cash flow in those dividends, which is providing some return. And, you know, inflation is really concerning right now, and dividend stocks are a really good hedge against it. You'll see right here, total return for the S&P 500 in the 2000s was negative, but dividends provided yourself a 1.8% annualized return over the decade. So you got some return rather than just absolutely losing money in the market. So dividends definitely provide for that sustainability. Next up is the dividend snowball effect, DRIP, which we talked about. And, you know, this dividend investing, it puts money into your account. But if you put that money into your account and make it make more money, you're making this dividend snowball. And the more you reinvest your dividends, the more your dividend income will be. And the cycle just keeps going on and on and on, okay? Going back to 1970. 84% of the return of the S&P 500 can be attributed to reinvest the dividends and the power of compounding. Look at this. This is the growth of $10,000 from a 60-year period, 1960 to 2020. In the S&P 500 without dividends, it turned into $627,000, which is really good. But if you reinvested those dividends, you would have made $3.845 million. Okay, that's an incredible difference. That is a dividend snowball effect. Lastly is cash flow is king. Okay. Cash flow is king, not just cash. Investing and making these gains on growth stocks is incredible. And if you can find stocks that make you great gains and you can find when to buy and sell and lock in profits, that's great. You know, I have a growth portfolio on the side myself. But I like to have that cash flow coming in consistently rather than the hopes of getting a one-time gain in the market because it also can be very unsustainable. And like I said, I own a few growth stocks, but I love having my dividend portfolio. And this is something that kind of stood out to me this is from an article I was reading once. It says there's generally two ways to become financially independent. The first commonly accepted idea is to have enough liquid assets that you sell over time. So let's say you have a million dollars in stocks. You sell a portion of it off every year and you live off that income. And the second, the much better idea, is to have more passive income than your expenses. To have enough positive cash flow that you could sustain indefinitely. Example, dividend income. Have more dividend income. Example, simple math, you make $100,000 a year in dividend income, but you only spend $90,000 a year, you get $10,000 difference. You're having more passive income than your expenses, and you are financially free because cash flow is king. Now, looking back at my portfolio, looking at it, you can even tell there's a dip right now, and I am not dismotivated at all, okay? I'm continuing to buy the dip. You know, over the past month, this portfolio is down. It's not looking very solid. Here, we'll go to the actual amount of money in my portfolio. I showed it off my videos. My all-time return is actually negative. You know, I started this portfolio in October. I've been a growth investor for most of my life. 
and I decided it was time for me to actually start building a dividend portfolio because of the long-term benefits. And I'm down $723 all the time. And I know it's because of market conditions. These companies I've invested are great companies. That's one thing is you have to be patient. You have to really trust the process, okay? Be patient because patience pays. Even though my portfolio is down, I'm continuing to buy. I just I have a pending buy of $300 coming in on Monday, which will add more dividend income to my life, to my lifestyle, to my portfolio, and all that good stuff. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for making it to the end of this one. Leave a comment below. I always like to hear your input. It's always valuable stuff to me. Check out M1 Finance if you haven't already. You know, they're handing out free money. Go lock it in while you can. It's a free 50 bucks, 5-0. But that's going to wrap it up, and I will see you at the next video.